Here we can see three beakers containing blackcurrant squash. The one on the left is undiluted, this has come straight from the bottle. And by taking a small amount of this and adding water to it, we are able to change the strength of our squash drink. Now using that word strength is not a good idea in science. We'll talk about alternative words in a minute. So the beaker in the middle contains one part squash diluted with six parts water. And this is about the correct dilution for drinking. The beaker on the end, as you can see by looking at it, is very dilute. Here we've added 15 parts water to one part squash. And you probably wouldn't enjoy drinking this very much. Right now you're probably thinking, what on earth has this got to do with science? Well, we're going to apply these ideas to acids. When you make solutions of acids, they can have different concentrations, and this will affect their reactivity. Here you can see a weighing boat which contains 3 grams of citric acid, which is a white powder. And the apparatus is a volumetric flask. The line on the flask shows us exactly where we need to fill up to, to have 50 millilitres of solution. Now we can add water to the citric acid inside the volumetric flask. Initially we don't fill right up to the line. We leave some space, we put the stopper in, and we invert the flask several times to dissolve the citric acid. Then we can slowly add water to fill the flask up to the line. And this gives us a solution which contains 3 grams of citric acid in 50 millilitres of water. So how would we go about preparing a solution which is half as concentrated as the one that we've just made? Well, there are two ways that this could be done. We could start with 1.5 grams of citric acid, and again use a 50 milliliter volumetric flask. And this would give us a solution of 1.5 grams of citric acid in 50 mils of water. Or, we could use 3 grams of citric acid, and we could use a 100 milliliter volumetric flask. This would give us a solution which contains 3 grams of citric acid in 100 millilitres of water. And just by dividing this by 2, you can see that this is the same as 1.5 grams of citric acid in 50 mils of water. It's useful to think about concentration in terms of particles. And if we were able to zoom in on our citric acid solution, we would be able to see that the water particles and the acid particles are mixed up together. The concentration is related to the ratio of the water particles to the acid particles. And if we make the solution more dilute, then we will see that there are fewer acid particles to a given number of water particles. So how does acid concentration affect reactivity? Well here we have three tubes containing hydrochloric acid at different concentrations. And into each of these we've placed a piece of magnesium ribbon. The tube on the left has the highest concentration of hydrochloric acid, the one on the right has the lowest concentration of hydrochloric acid, and the one in the middle is in the middle. Now it's quite clear that the reaction is the most vigorous in the left-hand tube, the one which has the highest concentration of hydrochloric acid. And in fact you'll see that very quickly the reaction is over, because all the magnesium is reacted. Now the tube which contains the lowest concentration of hydrochloric acid on the right hand side continues to bubble away gently over a long period of time. And in the middle tube the reaction was slightly slower than in the left hand tube, but as you can see all the magnesium has just about been used up now. And this has happened long before the reaction in the right hand tube is finished. And this tells us that if we have a higher concentration of acid then a reaction will happen much more quickly. A scientific way of describing this is to say the higher the concentration of the acid, the faster the rate of reaction. And we can explain this using the same ideas about particles that we discussed earlier. In the case of high concentration, we have more acid particles in a given volume of water. So this means there will be more frequent collisions between acid particles and magnesium particles, and the reaction will be faster. In the case where we have a lower concentration of acid, there are fewer acid particles in a given volume of water, so there will be less frequent collisions between acid particles and magnesium particles, and the reaction will be slower.